Welcome to a Halloween October inspired game, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna have to turn down the music, huh? What's up? Alright, let's see if this actually works. <laughs> but hello everybody, how you doing? Love you. No, oh, thank you. Appreciate that, that be. So, um, let's see what we can get started here. Da -da 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 -da. So, this is going to be a little test of, hello, how are you guys? Of, um, it's loud. Oh, should I turn it down even more? But, um, just doing some testing with the webcam. This is not the final outcome. But look, B, I put the shelves up. Um, I think this one's a little too high. I might uh, this one, so I might take it down, and um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It looks like pretty distraught all by itself up there. So I'll change that. But I I want to put some guitars here. I don't even know if they work. I'll just look on Facebook for anybody selling some guitars and stuff. It was when you had music play. No, you are delayed at looking. Okay. So, um, we're going to go, I think, with this. How about the chat? Let's go there. Maybe the chat should go like this away from that. Oh, but it's going to make it smaller. Shucks. Try it like this. So, because this is an older game, um, you're going to see a lot more of my screen that is not exactly the best angle to view things like let me show you the game real quick but this is going to be murder on the orient express and hello possum hello andrew how are you but as you see the game here it's an old game it was designed for full screen not for even the horizontal you know monitors that we have today so it's that old it's 800 by 600, so, um, but it's a great game. I think we're going to love it, and we're not going to stay on this um, screen. So how about now? Is the music still too loud? Because there will be music playing almost throughout the whole game. Is that still too loud? It might still be actually a little too loud. But I'll put um, sound effects like that. Is that... The music is just fine for me. Gay is here? Uh, what do you mean by that? <laughs> is that Cass? Hi Cass! How you been? Stormy heard your voice. Hi Stormy! And she came out of the bed and watched TV. Aww! Hi there! Mentari! Ah, hello! <laughs> That's Taco. No, it's okay. No. It's, everything's okay? Should I keep it as is? All the volume's fine? I'm gonna make sure you hear me pretty fine and that you'll be able to um, hear the voices in the game because it's a lot of talking. It's a murder mystery. There's gonna be lots of people that I'm gonna be talking to, lots of, uh, you know, sus uh, ah, suspects and stuff. I've been good. I did my first invert in pole class today. Oh, Jesus. No, everything isn't okay because I'm hungry. I'm I'm hungry too. I might have to grab some snacks later, but um, just want to make sure everything is fine. And I'm gonna go and head over to my live screen. And unfortunately, I've only got one monitor for now, so I gotta literally show you that. Because again, it's an older game. With these older games, um, we're gonna get um the weird and awkward visual effects and stuff. But I'm gonna go with this. Are we ready? Let's press play. Here we go. It will be a little choppy on the cutscenes. It's normal. In the house! You're surrounded! If you don't walk out that door unarmed in 10 seconds, we open fire! 10, 9, 8, oh, fuck this. 7, 6, 5, five 4, 3, four, one. four Blow up. 3, 2, 1. Last chance! Ooh, KFC. Okay! 
Perforated, boys! Siberia, Jesus. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what's this? Okay. So the cops are clearly arresting two people. But now we're in East Bell, Turkey. I don't know if you guys do this, but the Orient Express Monsieur is a real thing. Poirot is a personal friend of mine. He has done a great service of the most secret and international importance to the government of Turkey. It might be a scary now, game. Now, he is suddenly summoned by the Prime Minister himself to return and to Great Britain food. I remember once. that. <laughs> I dined with him only last evening and promised him that I, Marcel Bourg, director of the train company, assures his friend's passage aboard this evening's train Take my friend Poirot in charge. Poirot! Marceau, Love that guy. Secure a compartment Looks just of the like highest comfort David Sechel. <laughs> and see to his every wish. This office is the dependent upon him. And is voicing this Succeed, game. Succeed, and I will consider Poirot, the application PBS. for promotion you place on my desk week after week. Fail, and satisfy yourself with the position of clerk for the few short days you will remain in my employ. Monsieur Poirot? Alright. So you guys All understood right, Antoinette. the first Here thing. At last is the chance you've been waiting for. Your fate is in your own hands. The game is a little loud against my voice? Okay. Monsieur Poirot? It. It's okay, because I want... Oh, Jesus. This lady's walking. I need you to stop walking. Options... Maybe that'll help. Anti... What is that? I don't know. But, so, in case you guys missed it, uh, my job is... I'm playing this character, the one in the blue dress and the blonde hair. And my job is... I work for a train company, obviously, for the Oriented Express. And my job is to make sure that Monsieur Poirot, which is the world's leading detective is going to have a good experience and that he's going to take our train over to Paris and I think Paris is where the Oriented Express actually um, ends because it's a real transit I don't know if you guys knew that it goes from Istanbul all the way to Paris or Calais France or something like that it goes really deep into Europe so having said that I just need to make sure that he's going to be okay and that nothing goes wrong because Poirot is a very important man of his time and where did my face cam go? It's still here. Do you want to see it? You don't want to see it. It's, it's distracting. <laughs> but I'll put it back. Hold on. There is a webcam on this. Dum dum dum. Is it there? Let me see if you guys can see it. Hello. See, this webcam shows way too much. It's not cut yet. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> Hold on, let me put this back. You'll get over it. Okay. Let's go back. So yeah, I clearly need two monitors. I'm going to get that eventually. Just, you know, I'm starting streaming. So this is all I got for now. But that's in short, okay? So we'll resume because it's a very long game. Let's go. So this is me in the blue. And we're going to go talk to people. And I need to learn all of my buttons. So give me a second. <laughs> How do I move? Oh, by clicking on things. I barely have to touch anything, but look, there's I a do guy. not have time to browse. I must get to the station. Oh, I need to catch up with Poirot. This fool tries to sell me a cleaver with no style or grace. Tell him which is the better cleaver for the hacking of meat. I don't know. Let me see your right hand. Please let me pass. Answer my question. Tonight's meal depends upon. I need to see your Nothing right hand. Nothing is more important than that. 
This is a pretty good for chopping me. I don't know. Cleaver in your left hand. Ah! Here at least is one who knows fine forged German steel when she sees it. Good. They're letting me pass. So we'll click over here. There's Poirot on the right there. I need to catch up with him. Oh, I didn't know that. Thanks, Bianca. There's a movie of the same title? Yes, there is. Don't see it, though. Otherwise, it'll ruin the game. <laughs> Andrew, did you say you saw it? Oh, there's Poirot. Monsieur Poirot? But remember, it's a murder mystery, so we got to pay attention to stuff. What's he doing? What is that goat eating? Stuff. Second. Boxes of tea from Turkey and Ceylon. Herbal teas and thick, dark Turkish coffee. Okay. Do I talk to this guy? No. All right, Poirot! Monsieur Poirot? That munchin is not me. That was the goat. <laughs> it's just so that Bianca doesn't turn this off. I need to pass. I need to pause. Now see here, Foscarelli. I've done my fair share of travel. I'll tell you, Kataya well, tiles are okay, the good. finest made in Turkey. And I tell you, Agatha it is Christie the is tiles my favorite from his mystery ink. writer These of all time. These are the oldest and the most beautiful best of the, of the Ottoman best. Empire. Well, they are quite impressive, to be sure. But the Kataya tiles are more beautiful. I'm sure there are examples sold here in this bazaar that would prove my point. Gentlemen, please, may I get by? I know Kataya tiles. What I know everything about tiles now. Thank you. Young lady, nice settle the dispute. <laughs> you know the famous enameled ceramics? That's Bianca. Yes, of course, I live in Istanbul, but... We have to wait here for our porter. Find us an example of a Kataya tile. And an Izmik. Just borrow them for I don't know a second. Nick, no. no need to buy any. I don't have time for I this. I don't have time for this. Then permit us to continue the debate without you. <laughs> I knew you were going to jump and say that, V. <laughs> it's like, bitch, what are you eating? They won't let me pass, so now I need to find a Kataya tile. So let's go shopping. Fine, hand-woven carpets and rugs. They look as if they truly might be able to fly like Aladdin's fabled <laughs> carpet. <laughs> no, I'm not here to fly a carpet. What are we looking at here? Oh, we're stealing stuff. You I saw nothing. I need to remember to return this. Furniture and household goods, all handmade, with outstanding Turkish craftsmanship. This stall displays intricately hand-painted kataya bowls. Okay. The merchant seems to be watching the man next to me closely. Oh, are you the merchant stuff? is watching that man quite intently. Mm. Fine, hand-woven carpets and rugs. They look as if they truly might... All right, all right. What it, what Something is? belongs here. I, I need to find a now an Iznik. Furniture and household goods. I need an Iznik tile. This stall dis Okay, okay, let's go. We need an Iznik tile. Let's go see this guy now. I need to remember to return this. Are these Iznik? Pottery and artifacts from Mesopotamia to India and beyond. Mesopotamia. Although I've heard some objects are made by the school locally. And all right, all right. Pottery and... All right, all right. Let's go. Before you realize. If I need something. It is almost difficult to believe such an astounding structure serves as a train station. Yes, the station. The Gare du Nord pales in comparison. All right, guys, I, I think I got both. Ah, she returns. Perhaps uh, now we can settle this. Did you bring us a Kataya? Yes. Or an Iznik? Both. Here is a Kataya bowl. It is the best, of course. There. What did I tell you? Thank you, young woman. Now we can turn our attention to more important things. Uh, like those fountains we were discussing earlier. Fountains? Um, should I return shit? I think I should. I'm a good little detective. How do I do it, though? Oh, I gave him the bowl. Uh, later, player. 
they'll return this. Um, Something belong. I want to use it. There, none the wiser. Okay. It's good to do this because I and I, I think the reason why they do this is to get uh, used to the controls. Okay, so now I can pass. <gasps> I can steal something. Boxes of tea from Turkey and Ceylon. I sure is it. Poro. Men arguing and needing a referee is accurate. <laughs> Where am I? So this is me. I just passed them. Poirot! Monsieur Poirot? Monsieur! Monsieur! Ah, zut alors! Let me pass. Her Excellency has lost her parasol. We are searching for it to protect her from the sun, you see. Yeah, that lady clearly has not gotten much sun. I represent the express company. I beg your pardon, but I am in a great hurry. Then you are an ignorant girl indeed. Hey. Go about your business. I expect she can buy another somewhere nearby. Yeah. A parasol fit for a princess. Oh, she's she a princess. Are, I think not. This lady. I'm truly sorry, princess, but I'm in a great hurry. Hey, Finn! Yes, it's a murder mystery. It's a whodunit. I do not linger here for myself. Stand by to find I've out. I've lost my parasol. I can't think where I left it. I there I left seen it. it. That's I'm German, sorry. isn't it? Yes, you could help us it. look for it. I am not as mobile as I was at your age. And Schmidt would rather fast than make an adequate search. I would be very grateful. Fine, ho. Let's go back. I think I actually remember where it is. Would you be a lamb? Move out of the way. Ha. Yes. I have the princess's parasol. Let me pass. Buckets of dried figs, apricots, dates, raisins, and mulberry. Yuck, no wonder you're all thin. Could this be the parasol? But yes. Finn, how you been? How was your day? If your excellency pleases, we should port the train. I still day? must buy a bracelet for my office. Bianca slept for like 10 hours. There is ample time yet for the train. Let this helpful young woman pass. Yay! Bye! Oh, we can still talk to them? Let me know. So I looked at that. I looked, what, did we look I'm at not this? sure what those boxes contain. <gasps> Let's go that way. Can I talk to the guy? Every time I come to Sirkeki, its beauty leaves me speechless. Sirkeki. I thought we were in Istanbul. What is this? I'm not sure. Eggs. Buckets of dried. There must be grain in that sack. Buckets of dried. All right, lady. Buckets of Never heard of this. I used to play Clue back in the day. Oh, that's Please one of the things that I have for the month I of October. I'll be the playing Clue. To 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 catch, but I am so turned about in here. But you've heard of Agatha Christie, right? I pray for a guide, but the best murder mystery writer of all time, in my opinion. God rightly does not grant and she created answer. one of the best detectives ever with his name Hercule Poirot. I bought the whole damn series of PBS doing the TV series of all her books with Poirot. She wrote over 20 something of them and they were amazing. But the most popular one is the one you're watching right now which is Murder on the Orient Express. Oh sorry, what the fuck are we talking about? I'm with the train coming. Oh yeah, I'll take you to the train. Yeah, try and keep up. 
Yep. I'm taking the train myself, but I'm in a hurry. Please, try and keep up. Oh, thank you. You are my guide. The so Swedish or Swiss? Yes, Swiss? take me to the train, please. I Swiss? must not be missing the train that or leaves Swedish? Istanbul on this day. I so am Greta Olsen, matron to a small missionary school near the port of Gemlik. I nurse and instruct the children who have, uh, have lost their way. So the asshole kids. She's quite intent on following me to the platform. As an official train representative, it is in my best interest to oblige. Okay. So she's going on the same train. So I'm taking her to the front door of the train station. Oh, look at bird. Pottery and artifacts from Mesopotamia. We already read that. Sakeki Station's main entrance. Awesome. So let's go here. Hector, Depart. make sure the statue is safely on board before departure. Yes, Mr. Ratchet. Who do they sell this pottery to? Tourists, I expect. Huh. Yo, We're Irish! How you been? Looks authentic. I know you've Excuse heard of Agatha Christie. Please. She's around well, your neck hello. of the woods. Please, do How not are you? be stopping us. The train How's will be place? leaving without me. French, right? Are you traveling with us this evening? Yes. Yes. Well, I don't see what that business is if you're... <laughs> uh, will you pardon yes, us? Yes, will you pardon us? What's the rush? We have plenty of time. Fellow passengers and all. Plenty of time to get acquainted. I can't pick up his accent where he's from. Yeah. I got shit to do. If you don't let us pass immediately, I will see that you never travel in this line. Damn. Must I summon the police? No. I am an official of the train line with official business to see to. Mm -hmm. Sounds very official. <laughs> I like it when your eyes get all stormy like that. Hey. Mr. Ratchet. Did you hear a squeak? A squeak? Like in my voice? That was mean. Doing good. Just glassing that. That's the room I've done now. How about you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. A little tired today, but not too bad. Okay, Must fine. I summon the police? Yeah, no, enough. There's no need to do that. I'm sure we'll be seeing each other again. Uh, unfortunately, he's not a nice guy. Alright, let's go in. What about this guy? Can I, I talk to him? I best not get involved. Alright, let's go. Serkeki Station. Oh, Serkeki is not the name of the city, it's the name of the station. I gotcha. Oh, very pretty. Sakeki is more than a train station. It is a work of art, all its own. Marble floors, Are these barely worn no. by the feet of <laughs> thousands of passengers. All right, all right. Very pretty. That lady is still with me. Royalty, the rich and famous, and infamous have all walked these halls. So it's a very, it's like the central station of Istanbul, I guess. Do you find it weird that you read out what, how about you stands for, but you'll say LOL. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I think I read a meme like that too. <laughs> it said the same thing. <laughs> I do, I confess. Do I use these doors? Oh, that's Turkey. That's the flag of Turkey. And who's this guy? Who are you? He did it. He did it. Right, I guess we're walking. Mary. Not now. Not now. When it's all over, and it's behind us, then... Well, what are you waiting for? Don't let us stand in your way. When what's all over? What am I looking at? Sakeki is more than a train station. It is a work of art, all yeah, it's, its own. Pretty. I guess we're walking here. Hello. Tickets, please. Tickets. Uh, no one I may board the train without a ticket. I work here. I must be making an inventory of my possessions. 
everything. It gets lost. So she loses things. Like her mind. Um I don't think she's in the mood for conversation. Okay, what about you? I have nothing more to say to him. Well then I'm walking. Yeah, because I work here, right? Hey, uh, Sofia! Posters of Istanbul's attractions welcome arriving passengers. But Sofia's in Bulgaria. That's the capital of Bulgaria. I packed so quickly, I hope I remembered everything. This is yours? I don't know, I don't remember anything. Uh, that looks like Russian up there. Anything in the trash? Supplies for the train so that oh. passengers will have every comfort. There's the Oriented Express and there's Poirot! Poirot! But I must travel this evening to London. It is of the most importance. My friend, Monsieur Bou, director of the line, assured me My of boss. a room aboard the Calais coach. I am sorry, Monsieur. It is incredible. It is off season, yet the world elects to travel tonight. Not a single room remains. Oh. Pardon me, Messieurs. I'm Antoinette Marceau from the Istanbul office. Are you quite well, Mademoiselle Marceau? You are flushed and winded. I'm fine, See, really. It's, 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 it's like a Sherlock Holmes. Chore to catch up to the train. But he the train, uh, spots he things does like not that. move. Mademoiselle, <laughs> please tell the gentleman the Calais coach is full. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna need to see the thing in the train. Let me talk to what him. What is your name? Pierre Michel, mademoiselle. I've seen your name on reports. Your record with the company is excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mademoiselle Marceau. I always try to do my very best for my passengers. Then strive now, Michel. Okay. Perhaps monsieur could sit up in the salon car for the beginning of this journey? The salon car? No. Um... Please give Monsieur Poirot room 16. It is taken, mademoiselle. By who? But number 16 is always kept in reserve for such emergencies. Nevertheless, uh, tonight it is occupied by an American gentleman, uh, a Monsieur Hardman. He does not sound like someone to be trifled with. <laughs> His name is Hard Man. <laughs> we must find a room for Monsieur Poirot. Mademoiselle, if I could construct an additional compartment, I would. Let me see your passenger manifest, please. I have an Let extra plan of the Calais you. coach with all the passengers listed. Take it by all means. Okay, good. I can keep it. What do we got? What are we doing? As you can see, every room is filled. There are extra beds. Only two. In Mr. McQueen's room, but he has paid for a single. And Miss Olsen's room, but I hardly think Monsieur Poirot. Oh. No, merci. I would not think of it. Would share a room of with course. a woman? No. Good day, monsieur. Well, then I'll share the... But please think of something. I don't want to lose my job. Let's go in monsieur order. Poirot, I place myself entirely at your service. You know Poirot? Who would not recognize the most famous detective in the world? Mm -hmm. You are very kind, mademoiselle. I have a passion for crime. You huh? enjoy the study of it, I hope, not the committing. Oh, the study, the gathering of clues, the questioning of suspects. Merely what the Americans call the footwork. <laughs> Legwork, <laughs> like I work. believe, <laughs> As you say, I prefer the detection that occurs here. The little wrestlers. My scrapbook contains many accounts of your cases. That mysterious affair at Styles, the death of Roger Ackroyd, the noted businessman, Lord Edgware's murder. But oh, forgive me. I'm Those were all books. <laughs> yes, yes, studying. That's that's what I meant. Sure, of course. Duh. Yeah, totally. Totally don't have heads in my refrigerator. Can you assist me, Mademoiselle? I'm trying. Well, Poirot can share a room with Monsieur. No. Monsieur Poirot must share a room with Monsieur McQueen. But Monsieur McQueen's employer paid extra for his secretary's privacy. No, 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 no. I would not dream to impose. Okay. So give him my room. 
give Monsieur Poirot my room. I will be quite comfortable in the salon car. Mademoiselle Poirot, he will not hear of such a thing. I insist. I will not compromise the hospitality of the train. Oh, if I must turn you out, why then you will stay in the room of Miss Olsen. <laughs> I am sure she will not mind when she learns of your supper time. There we go. No, really, it isn't necessary. No. Poirot has spoken. The matter is settled. Okay, good. I will speak to the lady at once. Perfect. So I'm bunking in with that lady that I brought to the train station. She's got an extra bed in her room. And Poirot, he will take my room all by himself. I love the music in this game, too. Off we go! Vive la France! We are on our way to France. Loin of this, leg of that. I am not eating the flesh of the animals. In America, if it has fur, we either eat it or wear it. As my daughter always <laughs> says, there's a lot America could teach people in other countries, if they'd only wake up and listen. She says one day you'll be able to go into a restaurant in Istanbul and order a hamburger. What do you think of that? Why would you want to do such a thing? Why? Everybody wants a taste of home. I expect the Turks would agree with you. Exactly. That's what my daughter says. It's only a matter of time and Turks will love hamburgers. You will be sufficiently amiable to place in my compartment a bottle of mineral water before I retire this evening. Certainly, Your Excellency. For dinner, I shall have chicken cooked without sauces. Also, some boiled fish. I am very sorry, Your Excellency. There is no chicken or fish on the menu. Oh. Is he chef for this journey? The German? We, oui, Your Highness. The cooking of Monsieur Klaus is admired all over Europe. It is a coup that the train has secured his services. No doubt. Very well, I will have lamb. Again, without sauces. You've got to put it over big, whatever you're selling. Sure, that is what I say all the time. With motor cars, it is no half measures. This steak is excellent. The pork is also very nice. Say, we haven't been introduced. That is very true. We haven't. You are not eating. I haven't. That's something Gabriel would say. <laughs> How could I be so lucky to have found you? You found me. <laughs> Only after I had chased you across three continents. The statues in the baggage car? Yes. I saw them loading the crate myself. They were very careful. Huh. They better be. If it's damaged, I might enjoy owning a railroad. Who knows? You travel often by train in your profession, mademoiselle? Yes, I do. You are a person most fortunate. I'd rather fly. Ah, oh, mais non. Not for me are the aeroplanes, with their sudden changes of altitude, and the capricious tossing about of the passengers by the weather très mauvais. No. In business, speed is often more important than comfort. No, it is more than the comfort. The trains, they lend themselves to the romance and the intrigue. All about us are people of all classes, of all nationalities, of all ages. They sleep and eat under one roof. They cannot get away from one another. And at the end of the three days, they part. They go their several ways, never perhaps to see each other again. For a few moments only, the skilled detective has the chance to study his fellow travelers, to watch their little stories unfold beneath the microscope of the trained eye. Tell me what you see. So you want me to be nosy? You as well, mademoiselle. We will make the little game of it, n'est-ce pas? One must look, one must listen at all times. If you were to listen at the door of any compartment, who knows what you may learn? That would not be very proper, Monsieur Poirot. Proper? The student of crime must also be the student of human nature. 
Oh, what better way to make the study? Huh? I will illustrate. Mademoiselle Marceau, you are facing the entire car, whereas Poirot, he sits with his back to most and has only observed upon entering. Start with the table farthest away, the three ladies. Tell me about them. Let's have a look. I can't see them? Okay. One is a Swedish man. Okay, so that one I know. One is a Swedish I missionary her. from a school near Gemlik on the Bosporus. She is also very uncomfortable in unfamiliar Sauerkraut. surroundings and gets lost easily. That is truly wonderful. How did you arrive at this? <laughs> I helped her find the train inside the train station. Yeah. Oops. Well, it is an important lesson plan. When you know the facts, why bother with the clues? Hold on, let me read this about Iris. So, oh, he. You went to your cousins to ask about getting a gaming PC set up, like buying one pre-built versus building it myself. What to buy, where to buy. My only tip is if you go to hp.com, and I think this applies for anyone around the world, you can build your own, but they do the actual building. <laughs> so I got one that was the same thing with Bianca, by the way. Bianca did the same thing that I did. We went to hp.com, and we put in the video card that we want, the memory that we want this that we want that that we want and it ended up being exactly what I wanted and it was extremely affordable so I highly recommend going to hp.com and it's not because I work there <laughs> that's just a bonus <laughs> but seriously that we both did the same thing and we both couldn't be happier so that's all that matters right is that you're happy with what you got and it's pretty affordable that's my suggestion okay the, younger, the woman. younger woman is British from her accent. She seems very capable and down to earth. Yeah, if we'd one. been at school together, I believe we would have been friends. Oh. Wait. Oui. She has a strong character, that one. Perhaps the strongest among us. Oh. But she is a mystery nonetheless. Why yeah. do you say that? You observed her embrace of the most passionate kind with a proper English gentleman this afternoon? Oh, yeah. Yes, I did. Very un-English of both of them. As you say. And yet now she sits at another table, indifferent to him and his glances. Interesting. Lovers quarrel. What can have happened in so short a time for the lovebirds to fly from the light into the darkness? The older woman with the loud voice is American. Hey! <laughs> Even with the length of the car between us, one can tell that. Well, it is true what you say. And yet, she seems to be a woman quite amiable and without malice. A good beginning. And what is there to say about the tanned British gentleman? So, what he's saying, because I know this is a lot of information to take in when it's always the beginning of a freaking video game, is do you remember when we were in the station and we met a couple and the guy is like, come on, what do you want to do? Or whatever she said. And she said, not now, after. You know, something like that. And what Poirot is noticing is that he noticed the two talking to each other. And now all of a sudden, she is not sitting with him. So he's like, well, how funny is it that, you know, they were looking like if they were a couple. But now all of a sudden, they're sitting on different ends of the train. like, And she's not even giving him glances or all this. So he noticed that right away. So, in case you guys didn't notice their conversation, that's what they're talking about because they're not really showing it here. But that's what we're doing. Anyway, I'm preparing some dinner. While all this talking goes on, we can eat. <laughs> so, let me grab this. <laughs> uh, do I want a banana? Sure. Let's go. Head back. And we'll eat during all this talking. So, it's a lot of talking at first, but then we actually get gameplay where we do... You know, some hunting and murder solving. It's fun. All right. So the guy with the tan. Let's see who that is. He has spent much time in the tropics. Wait. Oui. Some far-flung corner of the British Empire. India, perhaps. Perhaps. He's not as proper as he looks. Who are we talking about? he is so in love, it breaks down all the inhibitions. Cheers, Roman. They are sure. married. <laughs> but not to one another. Oh, what how the hell do you know that? Huh? Not, now. not now. Oh, those now. two again. When it is behind us, yeah. then. They are he heard waiting it too. for the divorce to be final. Mm, perhaps. Military, I would say, from the way he carries himself. There he is. <laughs> Very good. Tan, 
military, a posting that in Egypt sense. perhaps, or India. And now the grand lady who sits alone. I'd say royalty, a princess, Russian probably. Oh no 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 no! You will not play the same trick on Poirot twice. Hello, she too you have met. I did yep. a small <laughs> service for her I earlier her today. Power, so. She has the very grim exterior, that one, but there is something about her, huh? A twinkle in the eye, perhaps? <laughs> no. I think she is not she quite shot. so much the dragon as she appears. Hello, and across from her sits... Hildegard Schmidt. Yes, I met her too. Her servant? Quite Whatever. unpleasant for a lady's maid. Ladies They're usually maid. such mild creatures. Vraiment. She also has sent a plate back to the chef twice for adjustments. Very oh These people have a lot of time on their hands. It would be things. nice if the menu was like more this. varied. <laughs> we march. This large table nearest the kitchen now. We just three gentlemen. What can you see? This was the Twitter. These two are the Twitter of the 1940s. Before Twitter, there was this. Being nosy. <laughs> the Italian sells motor cars. He's very enthusiastic about cars in general. Wait. Oui. A salesman to his very soul, I would say. The American appears to be a commercial traveler of some sort. Wait, he carried the sample case when this he guy. boarded the train. Yet, I wonder. The case, it was quite small. But yet he seems very fit, does he not? Yeah, they're gonna bite of such questionable biceps. taste, he can barely contain the muscles. <laughs> Can't a commercial traveler be athletic? Yeah. C'est possible. The Englishman is very quiet. This guy. He certainly does not share the enthusiasm for conversation Gabriel. of his companions. A superior sort, with a disapproving expression. Does that suggest nothing to you? I'm afraid not. A gentleman's gentleman, as the British would say. A valet. Yes, I can see him pressing trousers and shining shoes. And now, as discreetly yeah, he looks as like a possible, butler. observe the young couple directly behind me. Her dress is exquisite, very expensive, and the jewels. Ah, oh, she's lovely. The kind of woman a man would marry and lavish gifts upon. <laughs> it is very romantic, is it not? And yet she's I detect the, one on the melancholy fans. in your voice, mademoiselle. I'm sorry. I expect it's jealousy. I grew up in Jukar, a small town near Avignon. My parents wanted me to stay in Jukar and marry well, but I rebelled. Ah. Have you never rebelled, Monsieur Poirot? These days, not so much, I fear. Rebellion, it is for the young. I went to England too, to university, then out here to Istanbul. I wanted to get as far away from Jukar as I could. I wanted mystery, adventure, romance. Who doesn't I work? became a clerk. No mystery. So you became no a clerk. adventure <laughs> and certainly no time for romance. <laughs> Waro is not so much the expert on romance. Yet mystery and adventure may be closer than you think. Hey. The man is very handsome, aristocratic. He dresses as an Englishman, but his accent is Hungarian, I think. Very formal. We, a diplomat, I believe, that fiercely in yeah. love. Fiercely? The man who makes the unwanted advances to his young wife would suffer for it. <laughs> and now, to the last table, where the older gentleman has been glancing this way throughout dinner. <laughs> There's somebody who's been as nosy as them. The older man's name is Ratchet, an American. Very coarse and brutish, despite the fine clothes and table manners. I know, right? He forced his attentions on me in the bazaar today. I think he's been trying to renew the attempt all through dinner. He oh. keeps looking this way. <laughs> Most would see the smiling round face with the pink cheeks and the brilliantly white teeth that are false and say, there sits a benevolent personality indeed. There is no smile in his eyes. No, there is a dark fever in them. Not a benevolent man, not a nice man at all. And forgive me, mademoiselle, but I do not think that he has been watching you. Poirot is the unfortunate victim of his interest this evening. The younger American man is named Hector something. I like him. He seems very open and pleasant. He's Mr. Ratchet's secretary, I believe. But I don't think he's very happy in the position. 
perhaps an acquaintance worth cultivating okay, well, no. for an attractive oh, young you lady traveling alone? Call this attention Monsieur when you made Poirot, fun of me. I would never be so forward. Oh, but it is 1934, mademoiselle. Young 1934. Forward. Even those from Juca? Hector, I'm not having dessert. I thought I might try the. You go get started on those letters What's I that dictated. that Freud thing over there? But I. Did you yes, see that? Yes, sir. It says Freud on the window. I think I have the pleasure of speaking to Monsieur Hupu Poirot. Poirot. <laughs> Butchered it. You have been correctly informed. It's Poirot. My name's Ratchet. In my country, we come to the point quickly. Mr. Poirot, I want you to take on a job for me. It means big money. Big money. I'm a rich man. Rich men have enemies. I have an enemy. Only one enemy? Just what do you mean by that? Monsieur, in my experience, when a man he is in a position to have, as you say, the enemies, then it does not usually resolve itself into one enemy alone. I appreciate your point. Enemy or enemies, it doesn't matter. What matters is my safety. My life has been threatened, Monsieur Poirot. Yeah. I'm used to taking pretty good little... care of myself. I'm not the kind oh, he's got of a man gun. to be caught oh, napping, oh, oh. but you'll be extra insurance. I regret, Monsieur. I cannot oblige you. So he Name wants to hire him price. for security, but... Barrow's I have been him. very fortunate in my profession, monsieur. I have made enough money to satisfy both my needs and my caprices. I take now only such cases as interest me. I love that. What's wrong with my proposition? If you will forgive me for being personal, I do not like your face, monsieur. Damn! Right. <laughs> Damn! I don't like your face. <laughs> That wasn't polite, <laughs> but he said, forgive me for being personal. Crane company employee, I have checked the baggage car for the supplies I ordered to be delivered here in Belgrade. There is no bacon. I will not make a breakfast tomorrow without the bacon. My reputation is at stake. Find me my bacon or I leave the train here and you can cook all the meals yourself. Train company employee? I suppose it wouldn't hurt to look around. So this part is not in the book. <laughs> I don't like your face. In your face! <laughs> Belgrade. This will be a brief stop to We're take Belgrade. on supplies, mail, and to add the Athens-Paris coach. There will be few, Athens. if any, passengers in this weather. Athens to Paris. Where is Belgrade, Andrew? What country is that? That's close to you. Somebody's running. Somebody's running on the train. Quite Who interesting. Who the hell was that? Somebody snuck on. I'm a train person. Could have been a supply person. Belgrade Station. Not quite the splendor of Sakeki, but it is practical and serves its purpose well. I want to see that clock. Hold on. That was a beautiful clock. The architecture of the station is... All right, all right. Who are you? Oh. Oh. What's going on here? Somebody's, like, watching. Can I... The attendant I saw boarding the restaurant car came through this gate. Oh. I suppose that woman was seeing him off. So it was a woman, and there was a guy running from this gate onto the train, so she thinks it's the restaurant The car attendant guy? I saw boarding the restaurant car came through yeah, this gate. Yeah, it was an gate. attendant. I suppose that woman was seeing him off. I guess. The attendant... Oh, okay, okay, okay. The architecture of the station Maybe is... Maybe I didn't click that. Belgrade Station. Okay, never mind. I was kind of hoping there would be something about the... Clock. Let's talk to them. Bloody awful weather. The train better get moving soon. 
The passes west of here fill with snow pretty fast. Back in 29, there was a train trapped up there for a week. Ah, Colonel Arbuthnot, isn't it? And Mr. McQueen. That's right. Say, you're the company representative, aren't you? I heard there was one on the train. Oh, it's in Serbia. Thank you, Irish. Irish, you're leaving? I'm gonna go. Oh, you did. I'm gonna call it a night. Sorry for not sticking around. Oh, no worries, no worries. It's very, very late over there. Thank you for sticking around. It was good seeing you. Thank you. Have a great, great night. Sleep tight. Okay, sorry. What were they saying? Is there anyone in the station? Only people we've seen were an attendant and a passenger, I think. They boarded that coach they're adding to the train. Then somebody turned out the station lights. It's the Athens Paris coach, I think. Mr. Ratchet and I travel this route quite a bit. Yes, well, I have all the fresh air I need, if you'll excuse me. I'll be getting along then, too. Don't want to hold us up. I want to ask about his jacket. That's a very interesting looking jacket. Back on the train. We can't afford to lose our chef. I'd better. Oh, the bacon. Let's look for bacon. I gotta bring home the bacon. Oh, there's more people to talk to. This is our company representative from Istanbul? A woman? What? Mademoiselle Marceau, this is Tayyip, our engineer. Sexist in 1934. This is the days of Clark Gable. How you doing? That Marceau. What is the report from the station master? What is the report from the station master? It is not good, I'm afraid. Heavy snow is forecast for the mountains. The passes between Vancouver and Broad will fill up quickly. Broad. That sounds familiar. Is that German? Oh, I love stuff like this. I need bacon. Klaus is missing <laughs> a sign of bacon. He told me. I showed him the manifest. It was not on the Athens Paris cart. How many passengers joined us here in Belgrade? Only one. A uh, Greek doctor, I believe. Oh, that's the I guy running. I think I saw the Athens Paris coach attendant board the restaurant car just now. Really? He should be back in the Athens Paris coach. Au revoir, monsieur. Okay, so we had somebody join us, a doctor, and that restaurant attendee join us in the Belgrade station. Pardon me, mademoiselle. So Marceau. much to remember. Can we speak so at another time? Um, are you ready to go? I have been ready. I am not the slow one here. It is the Serbs. Can like we reach broad in this weather? If any engine can get us through, it will be this 460. I suppose I'll have to take responsibility if we go on. Huh? Company representative? And a woman? No, this is my train. My decision. We go. Um, my house, my rules. I'm a man, you're a woman. Do what I say. Serbian, I suppose. It would have to be Serbian. We are in Serbia. If only... Antoine... Wait, it what? is frustrating. Antoinette, you're in... I can't it read the only... tags. There's gotta be bacon here somewhere. It is fr Serbian ice. Antoinette. Alright, bitch. Alright, bitch. I need bacon. There's gotta be bacon here. There's nothing if else. Only I spoke Serbian. Uh Serbian I Who speaks Serbian? Do you speak Serbian? Excuse me. Do you speak Serbian? I am a Turk. Why would I speak Serbian? Oh for God's sake. Do you Can speak you read Serbian? Serbian? A little. The manifests from Belgrade are in Serbian. Could you read some tags on the Prague luggage truck for me? Yes, of course. That isn't the best. 
from the looks of it, that crate contains more carrot juice than Prague will ever need. Slanina, we have found Klaus's bacon, Mademoiselle Marceau. Yay! Will you take it to Slanina him so we can get on the way? In Serbia. At once. Hi, bitch. Romy, when she's upset while gaming online. What are you talking about? We're ready to go. We got the bacon. I brought home the bacon. We can go. To Brad. I don't know where that is, but to Brad. I do not protest the addition of you in my room, miss. You have helped me, and I am glad of the company, and I am a Christian lady whose heart is filled with charity. Fine, Here we go, we're getting Christ propaganda then. now. But I have already been picking out the lower bunk for me, because I am afraid of the heights and the sudden stops of trains, and I would not like to return to the children broken. <laughs> the upper bunk will do fine for Broken. me. I look forward to the adventure. Hey, and now, the miss, excuse me, please. I will go to the WC, as you call it. I was educated in England, but I'm the French. The wash closet? Oh, I was educated in Sweden, and I'm Swedish. <laughs> you call it the toilet? Am I going to the toilet? Mademoiselle Olsen. <laughs> How you spend the next few minutes of your life is entirely your own private affair. Yeah, it is. One must look, one must listen at all times. If you were to listen at the door of any compartment, no do worries, not be. What you, you feeling may good? Learn. How are you feeling? I'm still not sure I agree in principle. But perhaps I'd best give it a go. Alright, we're ready for some gameplay. Finally. I still gotta remember. We're gonna eavesdrop on some doors. I can't hear through this wood. I'll need something to help me. I'm robbing my company blind. What was that? No, wait, I'm not done robbing the mini bar. Got some alcohol? Take the alcohol, lady. <laughs> it's gonna be a long journey without it. No. Can I take the flowers? Take some flour. What's this bouquet is beautiful. Yes, it is. Take it. Now we start taking everything. <laughs> I would expect nothing less than this exquisite work on the most luxurious trip. Right. That's the restaurant car? Let's grab some grub. Oh, it's, it's locked, locked. fast. Never mind. The chef is serious about protecting this bacon. Uh oh. Don't remember, Andrew. <laughs> you can enjoy this. It's more enjoyable if you don't know what happens. It's a mystery. Okay. So, I can eavesdrop on all these people. And I'll do it with this cup. That guy is the most stuck-up human being I've ever met. Even for an Englishman. Rachetze Valet? Yeah. Master! Glad I'm not traveling in the same room with him. Oh, I like everybody. And him, he is as quiet as a little mouse. You're welcome to him, that's my view. Deal the cards. So they're playing cards in there. That sounded like the car salesman and Mr. Hardman. The guy that's like built Ford Tough. Hey Sarah, how you doing? How you been? How you feeling? Anka tanka. How you feeling, Anka tanka? Can I... Do I have to get the cup every time? But look here, no. Colonel. Your policy in India is obviously self-defeating. 
You can't keep it as a colony forever, you know. I don't see why not. You probably oh. wouldn't have seen why not back in 1776, but America is free as a bird now. And suffering through one of the worst economic depressions in history, I believe. It is the worst. You're not depression. seriously suggesting that if the United States had remained a colony of England, we could have avoided a depression? I don't see why not. <laughs> that is a British serviceman to the end. <laughs> I already heard that. Anymore? I think I've you heard. So th that's the same too that I just saw at the Belgrade station. I can't hear anything. Just make coffee. Well, whose room is this? Schmidt and Debenham. But I'm with Schmidt, right? No, this is mine. Okay, Marceau. Marceau is my name. And you can't hear I anything. I think I've heard all. He's dropped on everybody. This is Poirot's room. It's completely quiet in there. He's probably sleeping. Mr. Ratchet's room. Whatever you're reading appears to distress you. It doesn't matter. Not long awake. <coughs> I think I've heard all. I can't hear anything. That's the American lady that she was like, we either wear fur or whatever. In America, we either, anything that uh, has fur, we either eat it or wear it. Her. Oh, Rudolph, it is a nightmare. I know how hard all of this is for you. The only good thing about nightmares is that eventually we wake up. Will you help me to be strong? You are stronger than I, dearest. You have been through so much more. My love, my love, my love. Aw, don't listen it anymore. I think I've heard all I... <laughs> That's the, the sexy couple. With the diplomat. Count Adrian... That's Not the princess, sound. right? That's the princess. No, that's the princess. Who's this? Count Andreni. I forgot who that is. The princess is here. Mr. Snagsby is dismayed to see, standing with an attentive face between himself and the lawyer at a little distance from the table, a person with a hat and a stick in his hand, who was not there when he himself came in and has not since entered by the door or by either of the windows. Yet this third person stands there with his attentive face and his hat on his stick in his hands, on his hands behind him, a composed and quiet listener. He is a stoutly built, steady looking shop. She's reading that he looks at Mr. Snagsby as if he were going to take his portrait. There is nothing remarkable about him at first sight. <laughs> <but his ghostly laughs> manner of a that man. sexy couple. Enough, Schmidt. <laughs> Detectives are not so superhuman as Mr. Dickens suggests. They are as human as you or I. Now, I will rest for a short while. Yes, Your Excellency. Your Excellency. She's a real princess. Damn! Our bus not. Well, it's, it's gonna be quiet, quiet because he's there. the one um, with McQueen talking about how wonderful British people are. Britain is. Hard man. He's the one playing cards. This room is probably quiet. I can't hear anything. Yep. <coughs> oh, hello. You didn't Mademoiselle, see anything. what are you doing? <laughs> you saw nothing. Michelle, you startled me. I'm testing. Monsieur Boost tells me there have been complaints from passengers that the compartments are not as soundproof as they Look might be. Liar. So we created I'm a monster to see if improvements can be made. Mm -hmm. You are certainly being very thorough. <laughs> <laughs> Very suspicious indeed. Nothing's more suspicious than that walk. I'm just saying. What's in here? Can I take stuff? I cannot take these towels. They're of too fine a quality to waste on detective work. 
There must be something else I can use. What else? These towels? I cannot take the... No. Quite Toilet. modern. Modern? <laughs> what did they do before? Oh, they had um, little chains and things. I don't know. What can I take? What can I take? Can I take anything? Can't take anything. Oh my, I am looking quite haggard. Detective work and cold weather wreaks havoc on the skin. I cannot. Bitch, if you can't stick stuff, we're leaving. There's the Athens Paris coach. The door to the Athens Paris coach is locked. I think I'm done eavesdropping. Let me go back to my room and see if it resets the scene. Yeah, loading. She's back. From the Hello, toilet. Hello, Greta. Where have you been? Where do you know where she's been? I am giving the headache powder to the American lady, Mrs. Hoppert. I do not think travel is suiting her the way it does you and I miss. Oh, you must not trouble yourself with me. I have at last found the place God prepared for me in this world. What? I am content. Right there on that bottom bunk? What do we have here? What time is Oh, what time is it? It is 10.20. In the morning or in the evening? Looks like the evening. I am taking much comfort from the caring for the poor lost orphan children of Turkey. Oh, you must not. Okay, she's just repeating herself. Do I go to my bunk? What do I do? This is my bathroom. This wash basin is shared by the two connecting rooms. I know. This wash. I can't steal I it? I cannot take Why not? A good idea, but I've come up empty. This one. Okay, so that means... The door is locked. Oh. Okay. Bye. I thought I heard everybody, though. I think I've... I think I've heard. I think I've heard. Well, let's go back over here. I would expect not. I hear thunder. Don't rain, please. I have a three holes in my roof. What else am I supposed to do? This is locked. Oh, now it's not locked. What the? That was odd. It is pretty here, let me tell you. She's content by being a bottom bitch. <laughs> what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? Oh, we got an all-you-can-eat buffet. Let's Very see. appetizing in other circumstances, but... How can you not be hungry? Sterling sold. work is very stressful. Sterling. Oh, I took something. What they say about the chef is true. This buffet is a carnival's dream. Oh. I just don't have the. A Sterling silver. So let's start uh, investigating some stuff. A burner. I gotta investigate almost everything. I took tongs. There's a tumblers. Is that my ticket? My ticket. All right. Just a 
kitchen. This door is tight. That should be locked too. It's locked fast. Oh my god, I'm going like all the way to the front of the... Oh, somebody's here. This guy again. Oh no, shit. Are you following me, mademoiselle? No, Marceau. not at all. What are you talking about? Oh, he was the one that unlocked it. No, don't say that. In all the time I've worked for the train line, I've hey, never Kyo. seen the inside of How a you baggage doing? car. Stream is going very well. It is not the it's most a murder mystery. Of cars aboard the train. Anything can happen. Nevertheless, dum, I feel dum, the more dum. I learn about the trains, the more it helps me in my job. Hold on. <laughs> this is going to eliminate all the sound. <laughs> but I do have my sound alerts on and... Well, then you guys will see it. Never mind. <laughs> I'll just keep playing. I don't want you guys seeing it. <laughs> All right. Uh, we won't talk to you. I got stuff Please to do. return to the... No. I will see that all... No. Please return... Oh, you're right. He locked it. Pardon me, mademoiselle. Oh, well. He I should the return fun. to my sleeping compartment. Thank you. Okay, so I completed everything I needed to do. Oh, it's starting to snow. Hydrate. Hydrate. Let me head over to the kitchen, put this back. Oh, it's that music again. Dun, dun, dun. It's like a tango. do it. The train has stopped. I'm injured, Schmidt. Please stop your fuss. Everyone, please. The pass is blocked with snow. Nothing more. Nothing more, he says. Nothing more? I can tell you there will be plenty more when I get in touch with my attorneys. American trains don't slam on the brakes in the middle of the night. I expect they would if they were about to plow into a wall of snow. I am afraid we may be here for some time. Nobody oh, likes that this lady. Has happened before. Happened before. Sound yeah, alerts are offline. It? Why? What kind of way is this no. to run a railroad, I ask you? At what least happened? the worst is over. Maybe it'll come back soon. Monsieur Poirot, I'm so sorry. I apologize for the train company, for Monsieur Boos, and for me personally. Calm yourself, Mademoiselle Marceau. I hold none of you at fault. Not even the engineer, who undoubtedly saved us from being buried by the avalanche. You have sprained your ankle. It is not Poirot who has sprained his ankle, Mademoiselle. It is the train who has sprained it. Yeah, the reason I do not sleep in the upper berth is to avoid pain. Perhaps I should have slept on the floor. Thank you both for your attentions. If you would now please to allow me to suffer alone. If you like. What can the children of her school be learning? <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Somebody just yelled. Was that a cry? Yeah. Somebody just screamed. I think it was. Yes, I think it was. First, the snow is trapping us. Then, the old Belgian man injures himself. Now what? No need to be alarmed. Let me have a look first. 
Okay. So, we're trapped in snow. We got that part. Um, I wanted to mention something, though. That it's uh, the middle of the night. Oh, what happened to Poirot? So, Poirot hurt his ankle. That is not in the book. In the book, I would play as Poirot. But what they're really trying to do is have you as a new character in the book so that I can do his legwork, if you remember. So we need Poirot's brain, but I'm going to do all of the, the legwork for him. So that was the best way that they did this in the, um, in the story itself, is that they decided to injure Poirot and say, like, well, he's not capable of doing that because and when the train stopped uh, violently... It injured his ankle or whatever. So now he's in bed and stuck there. So I have to do all of the producing. But right now we heard a sound. And here's the crazy part. Even if you've done... Obviously, we're on a train. We're going to get the same scenes over and over and over. What time is it? It is currently 12.37. It's pretty late. The clock says 12.37. Well, heck. I could have just clicked on it. <laughs> That could have been it too. Romy! Yes! Hello! But I'm just eating and drinking. <laughs> Alright. What am I doing? Resume. I don't want to do that. How do I get out of this? Oh, here. Okay, so we'll keep looking around. We, we already talked to her, so let's leave. And let's be nosy again. We're poking our head out. There's Michelle. Ce n'est rien. Je me suis trompé. Bien, monsieur. We speak French. What did, what did they say? Is there drama or calamity? It was Monsieur Ratchet, but he is well. Oh, is that then what he let said? us hurry back to sleep. Why did they talk French? Somebody's boarding the train. What the hell is that? <laughs> Oh, the little light's going off. That's to call the attendant. Oh my god, this nosy chick. She won't go to sleep. We love to see it. She's asleep. I shouldn't like to wake her. Although by her breathing, I'd guess that's a difficult thing to do. Oh my god. So what time is it? So now I'm being nosy again at 1.16. The clock says 1.17. One. Okay, so at what? So are you guys writing all this down? <laughs> at 12.37, we hear a yell. At 1.17. Mind you, I think the yell came from two doors away from me. Because that guy went to the door, spoke in French for some reason, and then left. But now it's 117, and that lady's door is signaling. So let's go to the door. What happened to the lady? There you are! Two doors I've away. I've been ringing and ringing. I beg your pardon, madame. Voulez-vous quelque chose? You require? There is More a French. man in my compartment. She's American. But Lady, Madame, you wish there was a man in your you compartment. Can see, there is nowhere a man could hide himself. I woke up, and a man was there. I felt it. You say yourself, Madame, that your door was bolted. How did he enter? Uh, how did he depart? Avalanches! Intruders! What's next? What now? She's asleep. I shouldn't like to wake her. Although by her breathing, I... Time is it now? It's just five minutes later. Now what? Five minutes later, 
What do we see? Michelle's still there, looking at... Well, he's reading something. What the hell? Somebody in a kimono is walking around. A kimono? Were there any Asians on board? Follow him! Follow him! Where are they going? Who is that? They went this way? The door is locked. How did they... What room is this? Is that the bathroom? It's locked fast. Everything is locked. Where did they go? Am I seeing shit? I'm seeing shit. It's 1.30 in the morning. Mademoiselle, please do not disturb the other passengers. What well, did you see? Hold on. Did you see the kimono lady? Talk to him. Did you see the kimono? Michelle? Was the woman in the scarlet kimono? I am sorry, mademoiselle. I was updating the inventory of the Calais coach supplies. I did not see her face. What compartment did she come out of? Yeah. I am not sure. One of the rooms in the middle of the car, I think. Uh, Madame Hubbard's, perhaps, or oh, Monsieur Pachette. Oh, uh, that's the man. By the time I noticed her, she was moving away from me. So, you're getting all this? This is very important. <laughs> Somebody left from one of the rooms in the middle in a kimono suit and a big wig, and we think it's a woman. Has anyone been up and about? Has anyone been besides up me? and about? Only you and the other lady. It has been quiet for some time. Has anything unusual occurred? Well, there was the avalanche, of course. Later, Madame Hubbard insisted she saw a man in her room, uh, but I could find no one. Did you hear a thud a moment before I appeared just now? No, I heard nothing, Mademoiselle. Perhaps it was in the compartment next to yours, uh, Monsieur Poirot, perhaps. Poirot! He fell off the bed. Uh, hold on. If there's anything else, uh, perhaps... It Can I go over there yet? I am sorry, mademoiselle. As I'm certain I'm sorry, you know, no regulations require that the doors to other wagon lit be kept locked, so that passengers without true tickets may not change cars. Oh. You're a little too thorough, bro. There's nothing more I can tell. Oh, for fuck's sake. Let's go see Poirot. Are you okay? Did you fall? Mademoiselle, please, no, do not... forget it. Fine. I'm going back to my room. Everything's locked over there. It's locked that way. And the only thing there is this guy. But you have passengers with keys, buddy. <laughs> That's very concerning. Or whoever that was. My daughter said it would be the easiest way in the world. Just sit in the train till I got to Paris. But now we may be here for days and days. They are trying to go to and Paris. And my boat sails day after tomorrow. How am I going to catch it now? I can't even wire to cancel my passage. I feel too mad to talk about it. My sister. Her children wait for me. What will they be thinking? They will be thinking bad things have happened to me. I have business in Milano. A very rich gentleman with his eye on an Alfa Romeo designed by Enzo Ferrari himself. If I am late, I may lose the sale. Say... You never said what line you were in. That is very true. I didn't. <laughs> we may be here That's for Gabriel. <laughs> Back in 29, there was a train trapped in the snow like this for a week. The passengers almost starved. I'm told they hunted wolves for food. Whoa. There's always cannibalism, of course. <laughs> I remember one time up near Damn, Kastner. this guy's serious. Old man, are you going to eat those rashers of bacon? They're quite nice. What country is this anyway? Yugoslavia, I believe. Oh, one of those Balkan things. What can you expect? You work for the train company? Yes, but there isn't much I can do, I'm afraid. They'll send out a plow train from Broad. It's standard procedure. I don't blame you. There's nothing anyone can do. Monsieur Poirot is right, Mary. Oh? He said you are the strongest character among us. I agree. 
Oh no. No, indeed. I know one far, far stronger than I am. Who? Who? Michel, you look almost ill. What is wrong? Pardon moi. Mademoiselle Marceau, Monsieur Poirot requests you come to his compartment at once. Something happened to Poirot. What's wrong? What has happened to Monsieur Poirot? Murder, Mademoiselle, of the most savage nature. I have ordered all of the train doors to the outside to be sealed, with the exception of the rear door of the Athens Paris coach, so that the engineer and fireman of the train may keep the engine's boiler provided with the coal. It would become very cold in here otherwise without the steam heat. The attendant... Uh, His name is Matteo, I believe. Ah, Matteo. Will inform us immediately if anyone else attempts to depart the train. Fortunately, the only passenger in the Athens Paris coach is Dr. Constantine here. He has examined the body. Doctor, Mademoiselle Marceau represents the owners of this train. You may speak freely. Oh no! Who has been killed? Monsieur Ratchet. So what shall we do, Mademoiselle? The one that just asked Poirot to do the, um, the security because he had enemies and something like that. He's dead. Dum, dum. <laughs> so let's go back to here so you guys can see this and hear this clearly it gets very crucial now we must contact the Yugoslavian police and yeah Dr. Constantine you must learn all you can about the murder Mr. Poirot I appeal to you we must contact the Yugoslavian police in Vinkovio Broad Yugoslavian police <laughs> are you mad they will detain us all for weeks while they trample evidence and bluster about with no idea how to solve a murder. Ah, if only we were in Greece. The doctor's Greek. <laughs> oh, hell no. That man knew what was going to happen. Yep. He had, uh... He has enemies, right? Dr. Constantine, you must learn all you can about the murder. Your faith in my powers is gratifying, miss. But already I have learned all that my expertise can tell me. I am no detective. Monsieur Poirot, I appeal to you. We cannot wait for the Yugoslavian police. They will detain us all for weeks while they trample evidence and bluster about with no idea how to solve a murder. Ah, if only we were in Greece. Take command of the investigation. Oh, must I? We both know the longer a crime goes uninvestigated, the more difficult it becomes to solve. Ah, yes, of course, I remember. You are the student of crime. And what you say is very true. All the same. You can be on your way to your important case in England. We can avoid delays, annoyances, and a million and one inconveniences for all the passengers. I am addressing an important medical conference in London. In two days. Oui, c'est vrai. Any additional delay would be difficult. Monsieur Poirot, my job isn't much, but it's all I have. The avalanche, your injury, now a murder. If it isn't solved, I will lose my job. No, you cannot be blamed. I will have a word with Marcel. You have my guarantee that he will not fire you. Solve the mystery. All we need say when the police arrive is, here is the murderer. Mademoiselle, use your own powers of observation. Ah, alors Poirot, he is confined to bed in the most serious of pain. How can he take command of anything? In my scrapbook, I have a quote from you. How does it go? To solve a case, a man has only to sit back in a chair and think. Use the little grey cells of your mind. I have often used the murderer's own words to spring my trap. <laughs> <laughs> and now I am caught by my own. Well done. Eh bien, mademoiselle, I will do what I can. I ask only that you do my leg work. This would appeal to you, I think. You know it would. Oh I will issue to you the She's challenge I once about made to my friend Captain Hastings. Accept, is such and we awesome will play a I little agree. game the between ourselves. You will need to use your <laughs> How own little game. Oh, as God, much as <laughs> and in the end, we will see if the I'm sorry, you don't have to watch if you're bored. ready to graduate. I've just begun. Refuse? I will guide your investigations much more. Either way, the crime, it will be solved. 
It is an important decision you must make now, before we proceed. I will not ask again. Do you accept? Okay, so this is what he's asking me. I can either A, play this game with no assistance from Poro. Um, but mind you, I come back to him to present things and blah blah blah, but he will not give me clues as to what to do next, because obviously there's a pretty big train and I gotta go to the same places over and over and over to find clues. Hold on one second. And the second option is he can assist me with um, some detective work and tell me where to go, what to do and all that. So it's longer than getting face camped in the Badela. <laughs> Most of these types of games are four hours. No, it's definitely not four hours, so I'm just interested. Is it long or short? It's pretty long. I'm not going to be able to complete it tonight, that's for sure. Um, so what do you guys think that I should do? Should I do a poll or something? <laughs> <coughs> or you can just tell me, should I ask for assistance of Poirot? Or do you guys want to do this 100% by our own? And mind you, if, I, if it's by our own, I can always go to Google and search what we need to do. <laughs> so my my choice is to do it on our own. What do you guys want to do? By our own. One for Andrew. By our own. I love DVD. Wash out your mouth, Andrew. <laughs> I need a moment to decide. I need a moment to decide. Time is of the essence, mademoiselle. Pray do not take too long. Yeah. Come on. What are we going to do? Are we going to do things on our own? No, Bianca's changes the subject. On your own? Okay, that's enough for me. Two out of three. Let's do it on our own. I am honored. I gladly accept the challenge. Excellent. Now, if you reach an impasse, think only, what would Poirot do? Imagine that I am there beside you, offering counsel. It may help. So, we begin. Dr. Constantine, take her next door. Yeah, we don't need anyone to help us. Your voice sounds like that chick from Overwatch. A Mercy! Yeah, she does sound a little bit like Mercy. They're both French. Well, actually, I take that back. Mercy is German. She's French. Bianca has zero idea. Getting our are spending the weekend together, so maybe in some downtime. I thought it was your alert for a minute. <laughs> oh, I'm in the freaking room with the dead corpse. He's dead. Oh, I'm stealing stuff. This is the doctor. I'm gonna check everything. Let's check the body first. Oh dear! Oh! Someone must have stood there and stabbed him again and again. There is something in the pocket of his pajamas. Something heavy. I did not disturb it. The pocket of his pajamas? Egg! Oh my God! One fifteen. That agrees with my calculations. Hey, remember? We woke up at 117, but I forgot wh what happened at 117. I think at 12-something, we heard a scream. At 115, that lady was buzzing her thing. And then five minutes later, we heard the thump. The thump. Right? Yeah. No, the screaming was at 12-something. At 1-something, we heard the the bzz, bzz of that lady going crazy, and then five minutes later, we hear a thud. A big thump. And because we heard a thump, and he's lying in bed, like, is there blood on the bed? Because maybe the body was moved. The thump would be somebody dumping the body on... I don't know. <coughs> Let's start observing stuff. Oh shit. The man was armed? It is bizarre. Why did he not defend himself? Yeah, he was stabbed. I think that gives you enough time to at least reach for it. Bruh. He 
was a jerk, though. I think that's to help with the, the story. Ooh. Take his teeth. Take a statue. Take a tobacco and matches. Take the light bulb. Take the flowers. Take it all, yo. Can you stand over here or something? A morbid fascination with the dead is not healthy. <laughs> okay, hold on. Um, footprints. I did not close the window despite the chill. I thought there might be fingerprints, and fingerprints. the cold, of course, helps preserve the body. Oh. Quite interesting. There might be fingerprints. Take care. There may be fingerprints. But screw the fingerprints. Take Talk care. about that. Regarde, mademoiselle. Sleeping pit. It's like a. I've already said. I won't find. Nothing else. Jacket. There is something in the pocket. Buzzing her thing. What was she doing? <laughs> there was something in the pocket. Matches. So in a second, I'm gonna check everything. Oh, I see you. Take his hat. Take everything. Is this locked? At the moment, I think I need it elsewhere. Alright, so let's investigate everything I have on me. Is this his hat? I can see something written on the label. It says, Revelation 1318. Somebody look up Revelation 1318. <laughs> what does it say? Hi, Romy! Hey, how you doing, Krim? I can't stay because I gotta cook and eat and get stuff done. Go to bed early as fuck. Yeah. No problem. Bye, Romy. <laughs> Bye, Chris. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. Hope you get some good rest. But, um... Andrew. Can you look up Revelation... What did it say? You saw it, right? Revelation... 13.18 in the Bible. What does that say? These pipe cleaners? A slightly used pipe cleaners. What did they use pipe cleaners for back then? Oh, to clean the pipes. Okay, there's a pipe cleaner on the floor. There are the matches, I just checked it. A sleeping drought. It's half full. Okay. A scrap of burnt paper. Okay. It looks like there was writing on it, but I can't read it. I can't read it from this side either. It's burnt beyond recognition. <laughs> Sounds like something I would say. It has been used. A match. A round wooden match. And what about these matches? Are these round... The round type. Okay. What is this? Flat match. A flat match? In the same room? That doesn't make sense. It's been used. That means... Would that even suggest that there were two people in the room? Having a cigar and shit? Making themselves comfortable with the son of a bitch? This cigar has been smoked down to a small stub. Even now, the smell is unpleasant. <laughs> Here's the statue. They talked about a statue in the beginning. Of an Indian woman. It is light for its size. This may be conducive for something. Oh, okay. I remember what this is used for now. Ratchet's false feet. 
very realistic. <laughs> what the hell? The tumbler. A smudge. I got fingerprints on this. Okay. We'll keep it here. This is a thick tumbler. A gun. Has it been fired? A 32 caliber handgun. Revelation, what numbers? Uh, I'll look it up in a second. I expect that in spite of its size, it is quite deadly. Okay. Let me look it up. Wait, no. Revelations 13, 18. The hand stopped at 115. So most likely he was stabbed at 1.15 a.m., which is when that lady heard that there was a man in her apartment. Or compartment, excuse me. There's an initial H on it. It's a handkerchief. And the work is quite intricate. It's like a really fancy handkerchief. And that's it. So I think we're good. Turn it on and off? No? There is nothing. All right, Has anything stop. been disarranged in this compartment? No, mademoiselle. I was careful not to move the body in making my examination. How many wounds are there, Doctor? I make it 12 wounds. One or two are so slight as to be mere scratches. On the other hand, at least three would be capable of causing death. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so you looked up Revelation 13 whatever. And it says the number it gives is 666. That's what it says? This is actually a decent game. It is. It's a good game. I love this game. It's a murder mystery. So Revelation 13, 18. NIV, I don't know what that means. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. That number is 666? Holy shit. Okay. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. That's what it says. Okay, thank you so much. Maybe there's a safe out there and I gotta put 666 in it? Some wounds seem to have bled more than others. You see these two wounds, here and here? They are deep. Each cut must have severed blood vessels, and yet the edges do not gape. They have not bled as one would have expected. Huh? So he was already dead. Ratchet was already dead when those were delivered? Some little time dead. The murderer returned to make certain Ratchet was dead? The oh. idea is an absurdity, of course. Even one with no medical knowledge would have been able to tell the man was already quite dead. <laughs> the wounds are scattered all over the torso. Yes, and you see this wound here, under the right arm, near the right shoulder. Could you deliver such a blow? I have a pencil if you would like to try it. <laughs> that won't be necessary. <laughs> How do you account for it? What do you mean? How do we account for a really strong stab? Oh, a left hand of murderer? Where he thrashed about as he was dying? The murderer had unusually long arms? Oh god, it can be anything. A left handed murderer could strike there easily. But of course! That blow was almost certainly struck with the left hand. Oh. Yet some of these blows are just as obviously right-handed. Oh. Or he thrashed about. thrashed about as he was dying. On the contrary, he lay completely composed. Huh? The bed sheets are not disarrayed at all. The murderer had unusually long arms. Please let us not stray into the land of Poe with his murderous apes stuffing young girls up chimneys. I know something of apes. They kill by pummeling or crushing, not whittling away at their victim. Yeah, keep talking about the force of the blows. Tell me something about the force of the blows. 
Some were struck with a terrible ferocity as to drive the knife through hard belts of bone and muscle. Yet others seemed to be haphazard and at random, glancing off, doing hardly any damage. Oh, they had their eyes shut or they were just in the dark? Someone striking with their eyes shut? In a blind frenzy? And struck so many times <laughs> with their eyes closed to make sure he they did. had managed to hit a vital <laughs> organ or Blame two? Andrew. And more than one assailant. It, it, would, it would mention to me that there was more than one assailant because there was a flat match and a round match. But one cigar? One tumbler? This is fucked up. Perhaps the killer was uncertain at first, and then it overcame with bloodlust. Perhaps oh. the killer was uncertain at first, then was overcome with a bloodlust. Or perhaps the killer tired of his exertions, weakened, yet still enjoying himself too much to leave off. Oh could God. there be two murderers? Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Some blows could have been struck by a strong man or very athletic woman. Others are weak. A frail woman, perhaps. Andrew may be onto something. Maybe it was that couple. The guy who's very freaking fit, very, you know, diplomatic and big and strong. And then there was her, that she's so gentle and fragile and talks like this. Can you estimate the time of death? It is difficult to say exactly in these matters. The open window, the cold, you understand, complicates an estimate. Oh, yeah. But I think I can say definitely that death occurred between midnight and two in the morning. Oh, great. That will do for now, <laughs> Doctor. That's the whole time that we were, you know, getting up in the evening. Right. Doctor? Yes, Mademoiselle Marceau? Yeah. I'm going to update Monsieur Poirot on my progress. Okay, I'll do will that. Will you make sure the scene of the crime remains undisturbed? Certainly. I will remain vigilant. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go. Monsieur Poirot. So she's telling him everything we know. The reason why I said that is because he said long reach arms, but also close attack, so it wouldn't match just one person, yeah. I agree. She has a lot to tell him. <laughs> Let's see if I can fast forward it. And that is yeah. everything <laughs> I've discovered so far. We progress, mademoiselle. Now, let us see what we can learn. Okay, so now I'm going to tell him about all this stuff, and he'll tell me his anal analyzation. The wounds tell too many different stories. Oui, the matter begins to clear itself up wonderfully. The murderer was a man of great strength. He was feeble, it was a woman, it was a right-handed person, it was a left-handed person. Ah, c'est rigolo tout ça. What does that and mean? And the victim, <laughs> what does he do in all this? Does he cry out? Does he struggle? Does he defend himself? No. He awaits his doom with the greatest composure. Yeah. Because he was knocked out. The box of matches suggests the round one belonged to Monsieur Ratchet. The box of matches suggests How do we know? the round one belonged to Monsieur Ratchet. How do you I know? concur. Okay, so the round one belongs to the dead guy. So the flat one probably belonged to the murderer? That explains one cigar? Oh, the pipe know. cleaner and the handkerchief are good clues. Possibly. What can we learn from them? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Remember the bottle I found in the suitcase? Wait, a sleeping draft and the bottle half empty. Yeah, so he took it. It would be instructive to learn if Ratchet took his usual dosage last night. Okay. Let me let me go next door and ask him. What of the residue in the tumbler? How am I supposed to know? A sleeping powder, perhaps, such as that I found in the suitcase. It might explain why Monsieur Ratchet did not cry out when well, he was attacked. But we heard a cry. A possibility. However, in my experience, but we heard it at twelve the something. usual dose of a sleeping draft would not be strong enough to prevent awakening if one were violently attacked. Yeah. You would think. Yeah, the gun. The gun was, was unfired. unfired. He would certainly have defended himself if he had been able. Yeah, he was worried. For now, 
It might be better if you keep the gun with you for your protection. Oh, God. I would not like our collaboration cut short prematurely. Damn. The broken watch tells us the time of death exactly. Mm, Very convenient, the broken watch Exactly. It's a little inconvenient. Well within Dr. Constantine's estimate of midnight to 2 a.m. What you say is true. Yeah, what's up with the false, the false teeth, teeth I found? important? Only to one who must wear them. <laughs> and why you took for yourself the false teeth of the dead man is not for Poirot to ask. <laughs> yeah, don't ask. But I hope they I prove take themselves everything. as useful to you as they undoubtedly did to him. <laughs> that metal the statue. small metal statuette. It is very old. And possibly quite valuable. Take it with you. Learn more of it if you can. Yeah, what's the up? Footprints There's footprints outside, outside the window. window. Should I go follow them? What did they say to you? The, uh, the killer somebody may left. have fled the train. And gone where? Still, they must be investigated. Hold on a second. The train was stopped during the whole entire murder, correct? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Was the train stopped during the time of the murder? I think it was, right? Shit, I don't remember now. But if the murderer left the train and had like a getaway car or whatever, how the hell did he know that the train would stop there for the snow? I mean, weather is unpredictable. I don't know. I found the inscription. Yeah, revelation printed on the hat. Band of his hat. I found the inscription REV 1318 printed on the hat band of his hat. Mm, a curious inscription indeed for the hat. Oh, yeah, I found a pipe cleaner, but I didn't find a pipe. I found only the cigar I in the ashtray. I found only the cigar in the ashtray. No pipe. Certainly, this is a clue masculine. Monsieur Ratchet smokes the cigar, lighting it with a round match. And someone else, still to be determined, smokes the pipe, lighting it with a flat match. Uh, maybe. Yeah, come to think of it, flat matches are better to light pipes. Because it bends to get the thing, right? The letter H can help us find the owner of the handkerchief. A clue feminine. So dainty. And to have the letter embroidered upon it, is so convenient. Mm -hmm. One cannot complain of having no clues in this case. Yeah. If a man killed Ratchet... After the sociable smoke... Then the woman came in later, not noticing he was dead, and attacked him as well. That's possible. Also, not noticing that she had dropped her handkerchief. Mm, very fortunate for us that she was so unobservant. Because the, the dark paper could be significant. What strikes you as most important? Oh, God. What was burnt and why? Not cigar or pipe ashes, burned paper. Yeah. <laughs> what was burnt and why? Precisément. But the paper is impossible to read. It is possible that some of the writing on the paper can be made legible again if the scrap can be protected, flattened, and held firmly in place while the heat is applied. I will need something with which to handle the paper most delicately, two objects of metal netting that we can place it between, and a source of constant heat. I have Collect that. for me these items, and we will see what we shall see. So we have the heat, and we have the tongs. I now need to find a way to hold the paper over the heat. I should look for the items Monsieur Poirot needs to read the burnt scrap of paper. And I'll find it in a woman's thing. Let me go here and here. The shoes. Should I go through the shit? There we go. This is the wrong kind of hat frame. Think, Mademoiselle Masso. It must be made of the wire mesh. Oh, okay. Okay. So not her. Let's find more women. The count. Oh, this is the sexy couple. They have their own rooms. Well, why didn't they stay together? This is the Countess. It's locked, it's locked far. 
Alright. This is the princess. Let's go to the princess and see. She's got a hat. What's the name of the doctor? He could actually be an assailant trying to throw you off the tracks, yeah? I don't know who could have actually done it. <laughs> but I'm going to accuse everyone sooner or later at this rate. Yay! Yeah, because there's lots of suspects, aren't there? <laughs> there's lots of people on this train. That's the whole point of learning about all these people. What the oh, look. How convenient. Hey, that's what I need. But I need two of them. Perfect. Yeah, but I need two of them. Um, while I'm here, can we go through her shit? Ooh. This looks like a puzzle box. Let Let's see if we can get it open. Oh, man. Oh, I don't man. Think Hold on, bitch. I can't see... I don't think... That isn't... I don't think... I am locked. <sighs> I tried. I can't seem to... That wasn't right. I can't seem to get the... That isn't... Oh, this... That isn't right. I can't. I try. That isn't right. <sighs> that isn't right. I can. I try. Well, one of these can That wasn't again. right. No, I. I try. I don't think that's right. That isn't right. That wasn't right. That isn't. I tried, but. It Can I turn this in any way? No, huh? That wasn't. That isn't. I can't see. Ha. That isn't right. I don't think. I can't seem to get. No, come on. I try. That wasn't right. Oh, I hate you. I tried. <gasps> that isn't. I can't see. Hey! <laughs> and now to see what was so clever about it. How we played the I don't DVD normally hey, go about taking earlier. everything that isn't we did. tied down. Which one were you? But under the circumstances. Which person, killer, anything were you? Hey, <laughs> oh, How are you doing? How are you enjoying the game, Romy? It's going well! Hello! How you been? How's everything? This is a pretty cool game. I, I wanted to play this. It's so old. It's like easily 20 years old. And it's like one of the first games I bought on PC and stuff. Um, what did she get? Oh, sorry. What do we got in here? This is the locket I extracted for the princess's puzzle box. What is that? It has a picture of a young girl inside. She looks vaguely familiar. I can hear her accent already. She looks vaguely familiar. Uh, maybe it's her granddaughter. Does it have blood on it? I don't know. It's like that. Okay, so I need two of those. Bye! <laughs> Should I be going through people's stuff? Nothing to... I've already Wait, is anybody here? Let's just keep going for the ship. Ah. 
A pipe cleaner. Pipe smoker aboard, and all roads lead to him. What room am I in? We found pipe cleaners, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's this? Shoes? It's I a guy. can't see. It's a guy in here. I think this is Mr. Hardman. Let me go outside and see the thing. No, it's Art Buff not. That's the the really British loving guy. <laughs> What do we got? Setting up some exciting things for stream. When you come into chat, you will have a command, Romy. Oh, are you streaming right now, Bianca? No, you're not. Finn is streaming. What do you mean by that? Setting up some exciting things for stream. When you come into chat, you will have a command, Romy. Oh, when I go into your stream and type the command of, um... You know, uh, exclamation point, Romy. That's gonna, it's gonna say something. <laughs> Murder mystery games are great, though, no matter the age of the game. I agree. I agree. Unfortunately, I have to go to sleep. Hope you have a wonderful time. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for looking stuff up for me. You were a great side partner, detective. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for playing Overwatch earlier too. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great sleep. Have a good night. No, I'm not. I don't stream until tomorrow. No. You'll see. Yes! Bye, Andrew. Okay. So I got it right. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I love games like this that really make you think. Um, if I have the opportunity to spy on people's doors and stuff, let's just do it. I knew it was the locked. Door. I knew it was locked. It's a little suspicious that the couple that we think it is, is um, their doors are locked. I can't see it. Just in case. Let's go into... So, Arth bought not whatever. Wait, is there anybody in here? Okay. What's this? Oh, here's the things that he sells. He's a salesman. He sells film? What is that? Hold on. What is this? Typewriter ribbon. He sells typewriters? I'll get ink everywhere. Regardez, mademoiselle. Is that a sap? Yeah. Very interesting. This is a leather sap. Filled with lead shot. It is used to quietly render a person unconscious. You know how in old time movies you see somebody like with a little tiny stick hit somebody on the neck or the shoulder or the head and they got knocked out? That's what this is. That's the stick. Mm -hmm. Why am I always the sidekick? I don't know. Because I'm the one streaming. <laughs> if you stream and I help you out, I'll call. you can call me the sidekick. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. Uh, although I don't think that will be needed. No, but you know what? I'm holding on to it. Because to me... That might be another reason why that guy was unconscious. So I checked in there. Anything else before I leave? I'm leaving. Michelle's here? Michelle's not here. That's the bathroom. I couldn't take anything. That's locked still, I assume? Yeah. The door to the Athens Paris coach is locked. Alright. All right, let's go to the front. So this is old Mother Hubbard. I checked her room for the hat, but I didn't check her room for like stuff. Quite interesting. Wait, is she here? <gasps> Wait, turn around. There's something on the floor. What is that? It looks like gold. A button. From a conductor's uniform, like Michelle. I wonder if there's a uniform missing a button. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, now the, now the conductor did it. <laughs> there's like a little bit of every 
everybody everywhere. <laughs> I'll this? put this into my scrapbook so I can take a closer look at I it later. I want to look at it now, bitch. Hold on. Where's my scrapbook? Are you my scrapbook? Documents. Chatty letter. Here we go. Mummy dear, Max sends his love, of course, as do your beautiful grandchildren. This is, um, Marine. This is, uh, the old lady American that everybody hates. Okay, blah, blah, blah. They are so looking forward to you tucking them in. Blah, blah, blah. What? What troubles you had in Prague and Istanbul with the outrageous service at hotel? Oh, God. What? But I'm sure the American consulate, those oasis of American values and far-flung lands, were able to help you sort things out. But just think. After the incidents in London and here? Okay. But just think, mummy. Inconveniences or unpleasant foreigners are all behind you now as you travel aboard the luxurious train. Oh, there it is. Just sit in the train until you reach Paris. I can't wait to see you again. About all the fun times you had. Your loving daughter, Maureen. Okay. And she's talking about a big bad wolf, so I'm assuming she's very young. I okay. won't find anything else. But what about this? The hat frame. Oh, I know. I know. I'm out. I'm out. Well, can I go in there yet? This is Mr. Ratchet's. I won't find I, Yeah. Is the doctor still here? Where did the doctor go? I told you to... You mofo. That's Poirot. Well, let me check my room. Does this lady that I'm bunking with have anything? I'm checking her shit. It's locked fun. I don't my need suitcase. anything else. Why is her suitcase locked? Oh, I see one! Hey! That's Perfect. what I'm looking for. Yep, that's what I want. Um, we have a bathroom, but that was locked. Now it's not locked. Shoot. Nothing to see. I see nothing. Good, I'm going through shit. Look, another one. No, this okay. hat frame will... I don't think I have to check hats anymore, but let's go through people's shit. Quite interesting. What's that? What's in the box? What's in the box? A box full of recipes. The recipes are written on index cards and stored alphabetically. Okay. That is one organized mofo. Alright. Let's go. Nothing else to- I know. I'm trying to get out. There we go. Nothing here, nothing there. Okay, I just came from that door. Yeah. Well, let's go to this one. The queen. It's locked. It's locked. Okay. This one? It's locked. The door is locked. That's the bath bathroom here? Can I steal I stuff yet? Get out. Everybody must be over here because the rooms are empty. He didn't replenish or anything. <laughs> God train is this. Where is everybody? Oh. I have more important. I have more important. Everybody's in the restaurant. Oh, everybody's here. I have more. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. Can I go to there yet, or is Michelle still back here? Well, he locked it. I forgot that he locked it. The door to the baggage car is locked. And this door is locked because Poirot locked all the doors. This door leading. And told them only to you to have the. Front, excuse me, the back it's door. It's locked fast. Open to get cold. 
Okay. Alright. Let's go back to Poirot. Does it tell you I'm here? Okay. This is Poirot. Let me talk to him real quick. <laughs> Can I go through his stuff? <laughs> I can't do that now. <laughs> He's in here. Hello. What is this? Maybe that's what I need to do stuff. No shoes. You don't wear shoes? You're wearing your shoes. I have everything I need to read the paper. That is most pleasing. Let's read the paper. I have all the pieces. All that remains is for me to assemble them properly. Oh, okay. I need curling tongs. Okay, yeah. We'll use that. Your current course. God's sakes. Um, let's go one. Give me that fire. I won't do that. I should. I need the two things. I need the paper. Put it on the top. The paper is extremely fragile. I've already pressed my luck collecting it. I need something to handle it. Okay, so let's combine the paper where to go this we will combine it with this the curling tongs have the burnt paper firmly but delicately Good. in their grip put it there and then with the other one We'll put it on the top. paper holder is now in place. Now on to securing it. Now I need to turn it on. Light it up. Here we go. This is it. Member. Member little Daisy Armstrong. Daisy Armstrong. C'est ça. I now know the real name of the dead man. What? And I know why he had to leave America. It's not Ratchet? Monsieur Poirot, I have documented that case in my scrapbook. Huh? I remember where the case. Ten years ago, Colonel Armstrong was an Englishman. He married the daughter of Linda Arden, the most famous tragic American actress of her day. They lived in the city of New York and had one child, three years old, whom they adored. Two men snatched Daisy from the arms of her nurse maid. The police were convinced that the young woman had some knowledge of the crime and The two men that were arrested history. in the beginning of the game? The enormous ransom was paid. But two weeks passed with no word from the kidnappers. And then there was a break in the case. Two brothers named Perkinson were identified by witnesses and tracked to a farmhouse somewhere outside of the city. The Perkinsons were arrested at the farmhouse where they and the woman not identified had been hiding. They were tried and convicted. At their trial, they implicated Cassetti, not only as the mastermind of the scheme, but the man who shot the little girl. Oh, wow. The tearful testimony of the Perkinson brothers surprised many, but they admitted their guilt. Ooh. And in America, the crime carries the maximum penalty. During the sentencing, the Perkinson brothers tried to make the escape. Jeffrey was captured, but not his brother Robert. And Cassetti had vanished without a trace. Madame Armstrong gave birth to a dead child born prematurely, and she herself died. Oh, the wow. evening after the double funeral, a broken-hearted Colonel Armstrong returned to the family brownstone on Park Avenue, locked himself in his study, and shot himself. A body was discovered in the New York Harbor shortly after Jeffrey Perkinson died in the electric chair. It was identified by a relative as Robert Perkinson, if he was a suicide or killed by Cassetti, hmm, was never known. Cassetti was still at large, seen now here, now over there, and still more tragedy was to follow. The police refused to believe the hysterical denials of the poor girl, hoping she might lead them to Cassetti. In a fit of despair, the poor girl threw herself from a window and was oh, killed. Oh my God. It was proved afterwards that, was that she was mate. absolutely innocent of any complicity in the crime. 
the Lord Cassetti Master. was the man, there can be no doubt. He had used the same methods in the past. Hired men down on their luck to do the dangerous work, but taking most of the ransom for himself. And always killing the victim if the police were closing in. Oh, wow. He had many enemies, that one. I cannot regret that he is dead. I agree with you, Mademoiselle. That was Cassetti. Still, it is not necessary that he should be killed aboard one of our trains. There are other places. <laughs> Indeed. The That's investigation continues. And we progress, no? And now is the time for the assembling of the evidence. Collect all passports, gather information about our suspects, seek out any clues, follow every possible trail. Part 2. The evidence. I think I'll stop it here. Goodness, it seems to have gotten extremely cold in here. Why? Mademoiselle, What's going on? the engineer has just informed me. A rock from the avalanche, it struck the undercarriage of the gold tender. The pipe that carries the steam that heats the train is damaged. It must be repaired, or we will all freeze to death. Jesus. Could this be coincidence? Either way, I'd better look into it immediately. Okay, so I will stop it here because this is a very good stopping point with the evidence. We're finding out what's going on and stuff. And um, let me put this here where you can see me on camera for a little bit. And this way you can look at the game and the noises. So what we basically know is... Um, so so what happened? Who was Daisy Armstrong? Daisy Armstrong was the three-year-old girl that was kidnapped by two guys. And apparently they brought them to Cassetti. And Cassetti was the one that shot them. Or the Robert Perkinson was the one that shot and killed the little girl. So they believe that Cassetti was the mastermind behind the whole thing. But they did pick up the two br brothers. Um, one was got the electric chair or hung, whatever they said, and the other one tried to escape. But long story short, Cassetti was still at large, and what ended up happening is that more f tragedy bestowed on the family, where the mother was pregnant with another child, and the mother, um, the child didn't make it, and the next thing you know is um the nursemaid uh i think she was french she also with all that was going on and the instigations and all that just freaking killed herself so there's a lot of tragedy in the armstrong family and this guy was most likely the one that masterminded the whole plan of kidnapping and killing that little girl so we are glad that he is no longer in this world. He was a jerk with us and with Poirot and seeking Poirot's safety. That goes to show you that um, he was very concerned for his life. And um, yeah, so all of that is pretty, pretty gruesome. And as you can imagine, this is a video game to get all this, these stories and things like that. You feel like a little disconnect to all of, all of it, but you have to understand that this was a book. They very much detailed all of that, that you just saw in that montage explaining what went on. And, and it was a story all by itself. So it's just a, a very detailed book that Agatha Christie just, my God, she just kept digging and digging and digging and just made an, an interesting story with every single little thing she did around this. So we're still on the train and we just read that little piece of paper that was burnt right next to Ratchet's dead body. And it said, member little Daisy Armstrong. So he could have been killed because of her. That, that would be a great motive, right? So now the question is, is, um, well, right now my, my job is just to make sure that we get the heat turned back on. But that's not something that's in the book. This is something that's in the game. But anyway, we'll stop it here. And I hope you guys enjoyed the story so far. I know it's very complicated. Um, it's, it's not for everybody. You, you have to be very attentive of everything that's going on and give it great attention, which is really hard to do. But um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and raid Mr. Fim. Awesome stream, thank you. Yes, I did it mostly for you, B. I thought this would be a, a great story for you while you're sick and you're watching a lot of TV and stuff. Thanks for the amazing stream. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. But um, let's go ahead now. I don't have any emotes or anything for uh, a raid, but let's just do this and put some emotes here and there. There we go. <laughs> That's good enough. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Romy raid. And we will go ahead and raid Mr. Finn. And I think I remember how to do that. I'm going to go to the channel thing here. Because I never raid anybody. I usually have less than five people. And when I have less than five people, I don't you know, raid. But I'm going to do it anyway because I wanted to watch uh, Finn. Uh, I'm going to go over here. Da -da 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 -da. Raid. A channel. I'm going to go to Finn. Where are you, Finn? Is he going by? There he is. Thank you. And we can start the raid. And we'll tell him I said hi. But thank you again all for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you liked it. It's an amazing game. And uh, um, Agatha Christie actually... Um, th her estate actually helped with the making of this game. So it was completely blessed by the family. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anyway. Did you unraid? It isn't raiding. Why did I... Why did I say unraid? I didn't unraid. I'll do it again. Finn, ah, what's it doing? It has a mind of its own. Finn fan. Start raid. Okay, I'm not touching anything. Thanks again, guys. <laughs> and we'll talk soon. Bye. <laughs> raid now. Can I click on that? Raid now. I'm going to raid. Here we go. Bye! <laughs> I hope it raided. <laughs>